What is happening, sports fans? It's your main man, Matt, from the DFS 5-pack. I'm rocking it solo. It is Tuesday, April 19th. We've got a full MLB slate to talk over. I just dropped the public video. We got 11 games tonight. Apparently, there's no weather issues anywhere, despite me having, like, five inches of snow out my window. Not really five inches, but we got some snow last night, which for the mid slash end of April just sucks. Um, supposed to be 78 and sunny by the end of this week, though. So I'll believe it when I see it, but can't wait for that. Uh, like I said, I just dropped the members only video. This is going to be a public video for everyone. Excited to talk some baseball with you guys. The NBA playoffs are looking good. Been some really good, fun games to watch. Excited to catch the Memphis-Minnesota game two tonight. And uh, yeah, always, as always, excited to watch some baseball. Before I hop into the slate, I'm going to shout out our promoter real quick, ABC Island. So if you haven't checked them out yet, the link and the promo code will be in the description section. It's a new book we've been working with. We really like them. We've had a bunch of people sign up and start winning and making money already. So I recommend everyone check it out. I encourage everyone to check it out. I'd appreciate it if everyone checked it out. The link and the and the promo code, again, will be in the description section of the video. And I'm sure you guys will all have fun from there. That being said, let's dive into this slate. Let me screen share this and we'll be on our way. So as far as pitching options go, a couple guys really stand out. And one of them is going to be Joe Musgrove at 8,600. I think the Reds have the worst offense in baseball. They are horrible. And Musgrove at home is just in a really good spot. Too cheap, in my opinion, at 8,600. Was way too cheap last time out at 76, but in a much tougher spot against Atlanta. Cruised there, finished with close to 30 DK points, 28 plus. After he was pretty good in the season debut against Arizona, you know, got the win and they, uh, or didn't get the win, excuse me, and he still put up 22 plus DK points. So, yeah, he's been solid to start the year. He's too cheap for this spot. I like him a ton in all formats. I imagine he's going to be popular as he should be. But as I often say to people who ask me about, you know, chalk pitchers, can we use these guys, et cetera. If I like a pitcher a lot and he's chalky, I never mind it. Where I want to be different is like guys that are really chalky just because of their price tags and they're really not very good and they might be in tougher spots, et cetera, et cetera. I don't feel that way about Musgrove here. He's a good pitcher. He's in a great spot. A lot to like about him in all formats. Doesn't mean he's going to pitch well, but on paper, he's a good look. All right, let's talk about some bats. So Seattle's been good to me this year, good to us this year. And I like him again tonight against John Gray. Now, Gray has always been better against righties, so not the greatest spot on paper for France. But France is just a true professional hitter. He's got some pop in there, multiple base hits in back-to-back -back games. He's five for his last 12. He's got a homer in there, no strikeouts in there, which is good to see. So he puts the ball in play. I'm a fan of Ty France. I like him in this spot. He works as a tournament one-off. He also works in the Seattle stack, which I don't think will be very popular at all. All right, now to a guy that I do think gets some love here, and deservedly so, Manny Machado. Having a really nice start to the season. You can see he's had a couple of monster games recently, including last night where he went three, of, three for four with a bomb, a double, and a single, triple shy of the cycle. He's just way too cheap. Really good spot for him here against uh, – Gil Martin, San Martin. I knew it was Gil Martin or San Martin. Against San Martin, got a little bit confused for a second. Sorry about that. Against great spot for him against the lefty in San Martin. You know, at home, in really really good form right now. Like I mentioned, three for four last night. He had that monster game about a week ago where he put up forty four DK points. He looks like the top third baseman on the board at just a too cheap of at a way too cheap forty six hundred dollar price tag. Or not to a guy. So Philly was awful last night. They were popular. They were chalky. They ended up not being very good at all. I think it's hard not to take a look at them again tonight. And Gregorius is a guy that stands out to me at 4,900. Did not start last night. Got a pinch hit double in the eighth inning. Phillies failed to do anything after that. But at 4,900 in a lefty-on-lefty -lefty matchup, I'm not sure how much love Didi gets here. And I actually like him a lot in that Philly stack. One of my favorite pieces, especially considering I don't think he's going to get a lot of love. And just wanted to at least bring up one member of the Phillies here because it's hard not to see them going off at some point in this series. And tonight could be the night. All right, last but not least, 
if you look at if you take a look at the Atlanta Braves price tag tonight, it's kind of like sticker shock. These guys are just way too cheap. Now I'm about as big of a Walker Buehler fan as you'll find. I never want to use batters against him. But in a situation like this, guys from Atlanta are just way too good to be this cheap. Ozuna at 2,700 is a joke. Matt Olson at 3,400 is crazy. So I had to bring up one of these guys just to talk over the point that while I never would recommend stacking against a guy like Buehler, the other side of it is that Atlanta is way too talented to ever be this cheap. So I think they work as fill-in options in all formats. Interested, interested to see what kind of love they get. I'm sure most people at first glance won't want to stack against Walker Bueller, but as filler options, you know, in a Philly stack or in a Colorado stack that are a little bit more expensive, I'm sure these guys are going to get love. And that their price tags deservedly so. So I think that's a big uh I think that's a big point of this slate is what you do with Walker Bueller, not necessarily what you do with Bueller because he's so expensive, what you do with the Braves here. Do you use them? Do you use a bunch of them? Do you use them as one-offs? Do you completely get away from them? Do you take the opposite approach and use Bueller at that expensive price tag who won't get a lot of love? Really interested, really interesting talking point for tournaments. So wanted to bring up, you know, one of their cheaper guys hitting cleanup for them, 2700 He should just never be this cheap. And even in a matchup with Bueller, tonight's no exception. That's what I got for you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you want more content, more videos, more me, go check out the DFS five pack. We'd love to have you. I'll be around this afternoon. If you guys have questions, I'll catch you on the flip side tomorrow. Thanks as always.